The Google Pixel 8 Pro is here. It's the best that we have from Google. How does it compare to the best from Apple, the iPhone 15 Pro Max? Well, let's put these head-to-head -head super soft style and find out. So initially, we're gonna look at the builds and design. I think both are really good looking phones. I would say the design, so both of them are quite incremental. We've had this visor design from the Pixel for the past few generations. And the iPhone has had this camera ring design for a few years as well. There are some tweaks to the design but they do look very familiar to previous generations. The iPhone comes in four colors, the black, white, blue, as well as a natural titanium. Now, these are quite muted, whereas the Pixel does come in this vibrant bay blue color. It's also available in an obsidian as well as a porcelain. And both devices do have this uh, satin matte finish on the back glass, which I really do like. The past few generations of the Pixel have had a glossy back finish, which I'm not a huge fan of. Now, which design you like better will, of course, come down to your personal preference. Both devices are also very premium. We've got Gorilla Glass Victus 2 on the Pixel. We've got ceramic shield on the iPhone. A polished aluminium frame on the Pixel, but a more premium grade five titanium frame on the iPhone. Now, this is the first time we've got titanium on an iPhone. And I do prefer the brush matte finish on the titanium frame personally compared to the glossy frame on the Pixel. Both devices also have an IP68 water and dust resistance rating. However, you can submerge the iPhone into water deeper compared to that of the Pixel, six meters versus 1.5. Now, I'm really not sure how important that's gonna to be to most people, but hey. And although both devices are quite similar in size, the Pixel is slightly taller, but it weighs a few grams less. And I would say overall, it is the more comfortable device to use because you also have these curved edges on the back, which I do like. Now let's talk about the displays. So I have to stay straight off the bat, both have excellent displays, some of the best displays in the market. They're both roughly around the same size, around 6.7 inches. They both use OLED technology and they have a 120 hertz refresh rate, which can go all the way down to just one hertz because they are using LTPO technology. And that's great for the always on displays, which both do have. Now this year, the Pixel does get some advantages. Firstly, it does have a higher pixel density, which makes it slightly sharper. But more importantly, it has a higher peak brightness all the way up to 2000 400 nits outdoors. Now this makes it one of the brightest displays in the market. It's something that I do appreciate, but that's not to say that the iPhone isn't bright. The Pixel just gets the edge here. Both have small symmetrical bezels. I'm trying to see which one might be smaller. I think the iPhone might just have slightly smaller bezels. I'm not sure that's gonna matter. And then we have a punch out for the Pixel we have the dynamic island for the iPhone. Now, the reason why we have the dynamic island is because there are lots of sensors for Face ID. Face ID works really well. The Pixel has an in-display fingerprint scanner. Now, this is an optical in-display fingerprint scanner, so it's not the best out there. And in my experience, it is noticeably slower compared to ultrasonic in-display fingerprint scanners, something that we have on, say, the S23 Ultra. However, we do now have secure facial unlock on the Pixel. So traditionally on most Android phones, we do have facial unlock using just the front facing camera, but this has never been that secure and you can't use it for things like banking apps. Google has done some AI software magic and just by using that front facing camera has made it secure enough to be able to use for banking apps this time. So this kind of makes up for the fingerprint scanner not being that good, I guess but it does give you more versatility compared to the iPhone. Now let's talk about the cameras. Before we do, just a quick reminder, if you're enjoying this video so far and you wanna see more like it, then do consider subscribing and hit that bell icon. Right, so cameras, I've actually done a detailed Super SAF style side-by-side -side comparison. It's around 20 minutes long and I've covered as much detail as possible. So I would definitely recommend you watch that, but of course I'll give you guys a quick summary. So for the selfie cameras, we do have a slightly higher resolution on the iPhone 15 Pro Max, but the Pixel does give you more realistic skin tones. And for the rear facing cameras, so the Pixel does have a slightly higher resolution primary camera, 50 megapixels. Looking at hundreds of different photos side by side, I think both do really, really well. The Pixel does have that Pixel look, I would say that the Pixel has overall better dynamic range and it does produce sharper results. 
Now, this is partly down to the processing that we have on the Pixel pipeline. This is something that some people do like, but some people feel that the results are a little bit too overprocessed. I personally do like that look on the Pixels, but the iPhone does shoot better in low light. Now, for the ultra wide and the telephoto cameras, the Pixel does have higher resolutions. However, in my testing, whenever I did try to shoot at the full resolution on the ultra wide or the telephoto camera, the pictures didn't appear to be any sharper. Also, although the ultra wide and the telephoto cameras are 48 megapixels, when you do shoot at high resolution and then you look into the settings, it says they are 50 megapixels, which doesn't make any sense. So as far as I can see, the pixel, when you do select high resolutions for the ultra wide or the telephoto camera, it's just taking a 12 megapixel image and then just blowing it up. Having said that, I do still prefer the ultra wide camera on the Pixel compared to the iPhone. It's wider and it gives you better overall dynamic range. The telephoto camera both have five times optical zoom, but I found consistently that the iPhone gave me better and sharper results, especially at extended zoom. It was also a lot better in low light I found. For portraits as well, I did prefer the iPhone giving you better edge detection. And although you can turn normal photos into portrait photos on both devices, I did find that the iPhone did a better job overall. And when it comes to video, both actually take really good quality video. The Pixel has improved quite a bit compared to the Pixel 7 Pro with great dynamic range and sharpness. But I would still give the win for video to the iPhone 15 Pro Max with better dynamic range and better low light video too, as well as lots of flexibility in cinematic mode. It shoots at 4K versus 1080p on the Pixel. It also lets you use cinematic mode from the selfie camera, whereas the Pixel only lets you use it from the rear facing camera. And it allows you to adjust the point of focus and blur after the fact. Now, there will be video boost coming to the Pixel soon. This is supposed to be coming in around December time, so I've not had a chance to test it as yet, but that is supposed to improve dynamic range on a video on the Pixel. Now the Pixel does have some really interesting new software features when it comes to the cameras. One of those is the Magic Editor. So now not only can you select and remove people and objects from images, you can also move them around, resize them, and it's gonna use AI to fill in the gaps. With the iPhone, you have been able to very quickly and easily select objects and people and then use them as stickers and things, but it's just not got the versatility that you've got on the Pixel. There's also Audio Magic Eraser, which removes background sounds from videos that you've taken. And this can be videos that you've taken even many years ago. And my favorite feature I would say is Best Take. This is where if you've got a group shot with lots of different people, and sometimes it's impossible to find just one picture where everybody is looking at the camera and thinks they look good. Now with the Pixel, it can identify a group of similar photos and then it allows you to pick the best face for each individual. And it's pretty crazy how good this works. It also works with pictures that you've taken Previously, as long as they were in the Google Photos app, I've even tried this with pictures that I've taken on the iPhone. Now, once again, if you do wanna see exactly how both of these do against each other with lots and lots of samples, then do check out the Super SAS style camera comparison, which I'll link down in the description below. Now, moving on to performance. So the iPhone 15 Pro Max does have the A17 Pro. This is the world's first three nanometer chipset. The Pixel 8 Pro has Google Tensor G3 with Google AI. Now in your day to day, I think both have great performance and you're not really gonna have any issues. However, if we're looking at raw performance, then the iPhone does take the win. Now I'm not somebody who games too much on my smartphone. My buddy Thunder E from Board at Work is, and he's done some detailed testing for gaming and looking at frame rates. I'll leave his video linked down in the description below. But generally speaking, you will be getting better frame rates on games and things on the iPhone compared to the Pixel, especially for intensive games like Genshin Impact. We're also gonna be getting console level games on the iPhone. I have been testing Resident Evil Village, but I cannot wait for Assassin's Creed Mirage to come on the iPhone. You're not gonna be able to get these games on the Pixel. Now, I know a lot of you guys are gonna be asking and wondering about how much these heats up. There were some reports of the iPhone heating up and Apple has released an update, 
Personally speaking, I did not notice this much on my device. The only real time that I noticed the device getting quite warm was when I was taking lots of videos and photos. So what I did do is I recorded lots of 4K video on both of these side by side, and then I measured the temperature and they were quite similar. So this tells me that the software update on the iPhone 15 Pro Max has fixed those heating issues as far as I can see. Now, software. Of course, we have Android versus iOS. The great thing about both devices is that this is Google versus Apple. So we do have the latest software and updates coming directly from the source on both devices. And both devices will be supported for a long time. Traditionally, Apple devices have been supported for the longest. We're looking at an average of at least around five years of software and security updates. Now with the Pixel, Google has now promised seven years of OS and security updates, which is unheard of, and it is more compared to what you're gonna be getting on the iPhone. Now, at this point, it is a promise. We're obviously gonna to have to see if it lives up to that promise. But realistically speaking, because you are going straight from the source, these will be supported for a long time, which is nice. Now, if you're gonna ask me which is better, Android or iOS, of course, this just comes down to your personal preference. I do use both on a daily basis, but there are things that I prefer on each. So for instance, on Android devices, I like the customization. You can see here that even something simple as having my icons here towards the bottom, I can't actually do this on the iPhone unless I completely fill it up with widgets. However, on the iPhone, you do get better optimization and apps do bring new features to iPhones before they do on Android. I can give you examples as well. TikTok, you still can't get dark mode on Android unless you go into developer options. Once again, both have advantages and disadvantages, and this is gonna come down to your personal preference and maybe even what all of your friends and family use. Now looking at some of the bonus features, we do have a LiDAR scanner. This is a dedicated depth sensor on the iPhone. We also have the action button. This has replaced the mute toggle switch. And this actually can be customized quite heavily. You can make it launch the camera, but when you are within the camera, it can be used to take pictures, but it can also be used to open a particular instance of the app. So if you are somebody who generally takes more selfies, then you can have it to open the selfie camera straight away, as well as pretty much any other shortcut you can customize it to do. Now, personally speaking, I don't use it too much because it is quite hard to reach. If it was a little bit more reachable, maybe I'd use it more. With the Pixel, you can use the power button to press and hold and launch the assistant. You can press it twice to open the camera, but you're not gonna get exactly the amount of customization that you have on the iPhone. The Pixel also has a new feature this year, and that is a temperature sensor. So you can just point your Pixel at some food or maybe your iPhone and see how much the temperature is. I really can't see myself using this too much, but hey, it's a feature. For the speakers, we have stereo speakers on both devices, one in the earpiece and one bottom firing. Both actually sound really, really good to me. I am no audiophile, so I have asked my friend Thunder E from Board at Work for his opinion, and he did give the edge to the iPhone with slightly louder and fuller speakers. But that is not to say that the Pixel has bad speakers by any means. Now, one advantage I normally give to the Pixel device would be the port USB Type-C, which is universal. However, this year, finally, we do have a USB Type-C port on the iPhone. Now, yes, this should have been here a long time ago, but finally, thanks to the EU, it is here. Better late than never. Now, one thing I will say is that you do get a better USB Type-C cable out of the box with the iPhone. It's braided, which I do prefer compared to the standard USB Type-C cable that you get on the Pixel. But on the Pixel, it does come with a USB Type-A to USB Type-C dongle. And not only can you use that for data transfer, but I actually use it whenever I wanna plug something into my MacBook, for example. The Pixel still does come with a physical SIM card tray. The iPhone in the US does not come with a physical SIM card tray, so it's eSIM only, which I know can be frustrating for a lot of people. Thankfully, I have a SIM card tray on my iPhone because I am based in the UK. Right, so battery size and battery life. So the Pixel does have a larger physical battery compared to the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Both actually have very good battery life in my experience. If I was to pick one, I would say that the iPhone does have slightly better battery life, around five to 10% better battery life compared to the Pixel 8 Pro. Now, it is very difficult to quantify battery life because everybody's usage differs. 
I'm sure we're gonna be seeing lots of different tests, doing battery drain tests, so you can see exactly how many minutes more you're gonna get on one device compared to the other. The Pixel, however, does have faster charging. Neither of these come with a charger outside of the box, but with the Pixel, if you use a 30 watt charger, it's gonna give you 50% in around 30 minutes, even though it's got a larger battery size. The iPhone can support up to 20 watts of fast charging, and that's gonna give you around 50% in 35 minutes. Both devices do support wireless charging. You do have faster Qi wireless charging on the Pixel around 12 watts compared to 7.5 watts on the iPhone. But you can get faster wireless charging if you use the proprietary charging method. So MagSafe on the iPhone will give you up to 15 watts. And if you do use the Google Pixel Stand second generation, then you can get up to 23 watts of wireless charging on the Pixel 8 Pro. The Pixel 8 Pro also has battery share, so you can charge other devices on the back of the Pixel. This is something that I really don't use much, and although you can charge other devices using a USB Type-C cable with the iPhone, it's not wireless like it is on the Pixel. Right, finally, pricing. So the Pixel does start at a lower price compared to the iPhone as it has then. The Pixel has gone up in price and it starts at a lower storage version. So if we do compare the 256 gigabyte models like for like, then the Pixel is around 140 pounds or $140 cheaper compared to the iPhone. So you are getting the better deal on the Pixel compared to the iPhone. And Google do have some really good pre-order offers. So for instance, if you do buy the Pixel 8 Pro right now, you can get the Pixel Watch 2 for free, which is worth around $350. Now this is gonna be for a limited time, so I will leave an affiliate link down in the description below if you are thinking of picking up the Pixel 8 Pro. But even after that offer expires, the Pixel will still be cheaper compared to the iPhone 15 Pro Max, and I'm sure there will be other offers coming in the future. So that is the Google Pixel 8 Pro versus the iPhone 15 Pro Max. I really do like both devices. I think they've got excellent cameras, some of the best out there. With the Pixel, you do have all of Google's AI features, which are very, very cool. With the iPhone, you do get that performance with the A17 Pro, but it might simply just come down to which operating system you prefer. Which one of these would you pick? Drop me a comment below, let me know your thoughts. I've done other coverage of the Pixel 8 Pro as well as the iPhone 15 Pro Max. I'll leave those videos linked here and here. If you wanna see more content like this, then do consider subscribing to the channel and hitting that bell icon. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, then do smash that like button for me. Thanks for watching, this is Saf on Super Saf TV, and I'll see you next time.